relax and take a slow, deep breath. Breathe out and take another slow, deep breath. Breathe out. And one more, a slower, deeper breath. And breathe out. And now that you're aware of your breathing, start to notice what thoughts are going through your mind. What are you thinking about? Don't get caught up in these thoughts. Just notice them as they travel across your mind and disappear. And now you're watching as the last of them pass by and you are now fully relaxed and now ready to journey to a beautiful place. Imagine a beautiful garden. There is a small river flowing through it and you now start to see many beautiful, colorful flowers. And you can smell the different fragrances and see colors, colors you've never seen before. And you feel a small breeze and you notice the clear blue sky. And you notice a path and you start walking on it. And you slowly begin walking and having thoughts of beauty, thoughts of love, and they just start flowing into your mind. As you walk, there's a white-robed figure that slowly materializes and joins you in your walk. They offer their thoughts because they know what is in your mind and your inner contemplations. You have a wonderful feeling that this being is very familiar and you feel so blessed to have their presence. For the next few minutes, you talk with them and walk with them, and you can ask them anything you wish. You will remember the wisdom that was shared with you after your return from this journey. You wish this walk could last much longer, but the white robed figure says it's time to go for now as he bids you farewell. As you return on the path to your starting point, you ponder on the new ideas, the new inspirations, you have encountered and you prepare to return to the present. You just take another moment to take in the pleasure of your conversation as you take a final look at the garden. Birds are now singing and the small animals have now come out to bid you farewell. Now come back to your breath 
Take a slow, deep inhale and a long, complete exhale. When you are ready, open your eyes and welcome back everybody. Today, I have uh, chosen some material from The Lessons in Truth by H. Emily Cady. I found that uh, inspired to review some of the thinking and the thoughts of people who develop what we call the Unity Church of today. Most people associate the Fillmores as the uh, beginners of the Unity Church, but there were a lot of other people that influenced them and that they studied with. And one of the persons who really influenced the Fillmores was Katie who wrote Lessons in Truth. And this is one of the basic Unity books and it's part of the Unity teachings. And when I joined uh, Unity Church uh, uh, in Lansing in the 80s, um, if you wanted to be a board member, you had to take a one-week class with the minister on lessons in truth. And I remember at the time, boy, there, this is a good book. There's a lot of material in it. And of course, that was many, many years ago. Um, I picked up the book and, and at first I thought, boy, I had so much good in that. I'll give a talk on the whole book. And boy, did I change my mind in a hurry because when I started getting into it, I said, well, this is, I couldn't do justice in uh, with 20 minutes, let alone a day. So um, I selected one lesson, lesson seven, which is titled Personality and Individuality. A lot of people use these words interchangeably. They think they're the same. But let's find out a little more about the person who wrote this book. Emily Cady was born on July 12, 1848 in New York. Her first job was a one-room school teacher. In her 20s, she decided she had enough of that and wanted to become a doctor. And in 1871, began, began the, became the first woman physician in America, a graduate of Homeopathic College in New York. Katie became deeply involved in spiritual and metaphysical studies and was inspired by biblical teachings, Ralph Waldo Emerson, and Emma Hopkins. She associated with Emmett Fox, Ernest Holmes, and the Fillmores. So she was uh, uh, kind of set in classes with the Fillmores. I was amazed at how much, although this book was written in the 1880s, I was amazed at how much it applies now in 2021. Let's move on now to today's topic, the words personality and individuality. The teaching today will uh, investigate these two words and we'll find that they have totally different meanings. Let's first of all talk about personality. And this is when we meet someone, this is what we usually make our judgments on, whether we like them or not. They're, they're a pushy person or, gosh, how timid. Uh, 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 how, why can't they get a little more backbone? We all make those judgments initially when we meet someone. So the personality applies to the human part of us, the person, the ego, the external. Your personality may be agreeable or disagreeable to others. And when you say you dislike someone, you mean you dislike his or her personality. That exterior, exterior something that presents itself from, to the outside. It is the outer changeable person in contrast to the real inner or, or the real inner person. Individuality is the term used to denote the real man or woman. The more that God comes into visibility through a person, the more individualized they become. This does not mean they become more religious. Remember, God is wisdom, intelligence, love, power. 
the more pronounced the manner in which any of these qualities or all of them comes forth into visibility through a person, the greater their individuality. One's individuality is that part of one that never changes its identity. It is the God self. It is that which distinguishes one person from another. One's personality may become like that of others with one whom associates. Individuality never changes. So uh, that's why we must never confuse these two words. One may have a very aggressive pronounced personality or external presence, which will for a time fight its way through obstacles to gain its point. But a well-developed individuality never battles. It is never puffed up. It is never governed by likes and dislikes and never causes them in others. It is God coming forth in human form. The personality bows before it in recognition of individuality's superiority. We cultivate individuality by listening to the still small voice inside and boldly following it, even if it makes us different from others, as it surely will. We cultivate personality when we live in pride, fear of criticism, in all manner of selfishness by listening to the voices outside ourselves and by being governed by selfish motives. Seek to always cultivate individuality in proportion as individuality increases, personality decreases. So let's focus on individuality. It is your essential self, your essential being. It is that which was present before you developed a personality. What seems to escape our awareness is the fact that your individuality is absolutely divine. Katie liked persons with a strong individuality. It's also uh, a result of a strong individual is the ability to take complex ideas and present them in an easily understood manner. And that's a sign of your development when you can do this. Um, so uh, I'll take some of the, uh, uh, one of the favorite examples of Katie was Jesus. Uh, you know, he lived in a time where very little formal education, they didn't have a sophisticated language. So he would use parables and simple words that even fishermen and masons could understand. And, and she always looked at his Sermon on the Mount as an example of what a great individual he was. And a sample of Jesus from the Sermon on the Mount. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. So um, 2,000 years later, um, I'm searched around for some people that are kind of I admire, that I feel were great individuals, and uh, Bruce Lee, the martial artist. I am not in this world to live up to your expectations, and you're not in this world to live up to mine. Now that's pretty simple. <laughs> Robert Frost, two roads diverged in a wood, and I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. And one more, Ralph Waldo Emerson. To be yourself in a world that is constantly trying to make you something else is the greatest accomplishment. In summary, I strongly suggest that we all continue working on our individuality. 
the more we can manifest true wisdom, which is God, the more simple will become our ways of thinking and acting. The words we choose to express our ideas in life purpose will be determined by this development. So the greater the truth to express, the more simple it can be spoken. And I'm closing, I'll throw this out. What's in our time, what's one of the greatest examples of a, uh, a scientific uh, individualist was uh, Albert Einstein, and he said, E equals MC squared. And all this complex math he did, it doesn't get much simpler than that in the outcome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Dan. The service is now open for discussion and feedback and questions, and I just want to share some general guidelines. For the Zoom tribe, please stay muted until you are ready to share, and after sharing, please mute yourself again. And as a reminder for our church, um, to mute ourselves when a Zoomer speaks. If you are sharing a private or personal message and don't want that to be in this recording, send us a note in the chat and we will take it out of the video. And we ask that you stay focused on the subject matter, personality, and individuality. And that everyone be mindful of the sharing between two to five minutes. I love this topic, Dan. Um, and I love the way you presented the power as well. Um, I think they kind of intertwine a little bit because Thomas is one of those people, it sounds like, that was very much an individual and didn't care what other people thought about his opinions if he truly felt them deep inside. And one of the things that I found out in my pursuit of uh, finding my individuality is that my personality often attracts people who are just like me. <laughs> it's very interesting. So if I have a grief with someone, the first thing I do these days, in the process of healing the grief with that person, I have to ask myself, okay, have I ever acted like that? <laughs> and 99.9% .9 of the time, I have. So I just wanted to add that as um, a thought to that. I think individuality is a deep subject for me because I am an astrologer, and I believe that you can take the chart and see the personality, but you can work the chart to find the individuality. We are unique, and yet we are all one at a deeper level. And I do believe that we came into the earth at a certain time, all of us together, to do a certain job based on our individual mission, if you will. So that's all I have to say on that. Thank you so much for your beautiful presentation. And the first uh, book that I was introduced to, the first class that I took in Unity was uh, Lessons in Truth and uh, found it to be more than you could present in 20 minutes and worthy of looking at and still very timely. It's one of those books that will always be um, timely in consciousness. So thank you so much for that. I appreciate it. And it's a good one to revisit. When I, w when I was meditating and uh, getting in touch with the individuality part of myself and the personality part of myself who was been writing for a while, but struggling to get that writing accomplished. And then I ask, you know, how do I do this writing? How do I get it done? And what I heard was, give it to me. And that's when the personality comes in. Well, what exactly do you mean, give it to you? I mean, don't I have a say in this? And then the individuality is, no. <laughs> And that is my problem. <laughs> the, the, the challenge of giving, letting the personality merge with the individuality so that we are one will. And I like this church because that means letting go of who I think I am, letting go of the thought that writing is hard, letting go of the thought that, you know, there's millions of books that 
aren't published, and, and what are the chances of me being published, letting go of that, letting go of anything that resists the individuality that can do anything, that does not resist itself, does not resist love, and for me to let go of every thought of doubt, talking about doubt, or, or, and, um, and to have that faith is then the beginning of the merging. And so I love this church because I love the idea of creating an environment where we can begin that merging of the individual with the personality, or I should say the personality letting go and becoming one with that individuality so they are one will. And then, you know, in your story, then the, the light is on its stand and it shines. And, and um, there's no, it shines where the shadows are. It casts the shadows away because my doubting thoughts would be gone. So, thank you for bringing that to my attention. Did you want to say something? Personal feeling is that personality deals a lot with uh, ego and it, to operate in this life. The ego, the lower self, another term for it, is very vital in that it's, we get our energy from. The individuality, I think, is another term is our higher self and we, it's our chore to let our ego get the message. You get your marching orders from your higher self. We still need you. you uh, there are some psychologists says you gotta destroy that lower self. And, and I say definitely not. We want uh, the little guy to be there to, to accomplish things, but the, the one in charge is the the individuality, the higher self. And if, if you missed, missed it, that we have a litmus test. When we find ourselves getting more in contact with the divine within us, we get less pushy, we get less aggressive, we don't have to um, push others away. And that's our litmus test when we find our personality is finally say, okay, I'll, I know where I'm getting my orders now. And uh, I, sh I forgot to, oh, I, I left out, but the reason Katie was attracted to people like uh, Emerson was if you were to meet him, he was a very kind of a shy, withdrawn person, a very, people would say, a weak personality. But on an individuality, he was a giant. He, his, his writings were uh, still uh, uh, masterpieces. And so she was uh, said, hey, I want to get more people like that in my circle and learn from them. Thanks. And I, I want to bring more champions into my circle, too. Thank you, Dan. That was a very enlightening message you gave. And I, I, I like the distinguishing between my personality and my individuality because I realize how easy it is for me to look at what are other people's expectation, you know, of who I should be, or trying to live up to and compare myself to. You know, I wish I could be as friendly as this person. I wish I could be as talented as that person. And I, you know, this not accepting my individuality. Thank you. The individuality is the higher self or the God self. It's infinite. Because it's infinite, then it's complete. It's all sufficient, like the Bible refers to God as El Shaddai, meaning all sufficient, complete. Um, in the book of Timothy, it says uh, we are fully equipped, but we lack nothing. If we lack nothing, then the aspect of our personality that is making us feel inadequate is. Um, going in the wrong direction, it's errone erroneous, making an error. It, it, it's erroneous to think that we lack anything uh, because we are one with the all complete, fully equipped, all sufficient, higher being, the supreme being of the multiverse, uh, being our individuality. We're, we're one with it, we, do, we lack nothing. 
There, there is no lack, there is no scarcity. It, we are one with what is all sufficient. We have everything. Yes, I really appreciated and um, enjoyed Dan's talk and the 12 powers and um, uh, segment. And um, also this discussion, everybody's input is so valuable and so, um, so helpful. I really appreciate all of that. Um, I wanted to add or uh, share that um, uh, when you talked about doubting Thomas, it occurred to me that he was vulnerable in his questioning, especially, you know, the story that gets so much attention you know, with looking at Jesus's hands after he died and came back, you know, really seeing a vulnerability as um, a virtue or a value. I think that's something that personalities, speaking of personalities, have put down as seen as something as weak, where actually I think that is a, a, an important aspect of um, individuality or, you know, maybe a virtue in the realm of time and space. So I appreciate that, those highlights and um, the simplicity that you share your information and your education and your um, insights, Dan, and everybody else who's shared today. I appreciate it all very much. Thank you. In closing, I want to thank our speaker, Dan, our meditation person, Dan, and our many 12 lesson of the many powers, Dan. Uh, thank you, Dave, for the music. Thank you for the podium assistant. Thank you for the um, microphone person and our Zoom tech. I also want to give a special thanks to Pat <laughs> because when no one was looking, I put one of her cough drops in my mouth and my personality is coming out now and wants to say I also like cherry and um, dark chocolate too. And my individual self is being very patient with my personality. So thank you, everyone, for participating in the service. We will close by singing the peace song. Dave will lead that, followed by the prayer of protection. surrounds us. I am the light, the light of God. The love of God enfolds us. I am the love of God. The power of God protects us. I am the power of God. The presence of God watches over us. I am the presence of God. Wherever we are, God is. Wherever God is, we are. And that's the truth. Thank you, everyone.